Hello and thanks for watching Stephen Mendy's videos. In this video, we are going to show you how to convert real floating point numbers to the representation in which they're stored in your computer memory. Before the IEEE devised a scheme, every computer manufacturer used their own particular algorithm or format to store these numbers. But now it's universally accepted all across the world that for the single precision floating point system, the method that I'm showing you is appropriate. If you dump the computer's memory, you can manually transfer the bytes into the particular real number that is being represented by the mechanism of storage. Okay, in the floating point single precision scheme, we have 32 bits, which are in fact eight hexadecimal characters stored in your memory to represent a number as we are going to show you. What we are going to do in this video is show you how to convert from the number to these 32 bits and how to go back from the 32 bit representation back to an original decimal number. It's important to understand this is a representation. Many other schemes could be used, but as I said before, this scheme has been adopted internationally, so you're on sound ground. You can actually apply this scheme manually in your head if you needed to take a computer memory dump and you knew where to recover the numbers from. Okay, so the first thing you have to do if you want to convert negative 114.625 into its binary equivalent is to realize that to the left of the binary point we multiply by powers of 2 as shown in the pink and to the right of the binary point we divide by 2 as shown in the pink. So we divide 1 by 2 to get 0 0.5, we divide that by 2 to get 0.25 and that by 2 again to get 0.125. We have also shown 114.625 represented there. And if you doubt that, you can take the ones and add up the values in pink wherever there's a one. And you see that it will come back to our 114.625. What do we do next? The next thing we do is we move the binary point to the left just until you have the last one. Notice we have stopped moving it at the one. We have not moved it past the one to the zero. You must have a one in front of the point wherever it stops. So we can move it six places to the left. And when we do that, as shown, that means we have multiplied it by 2 raised to the power of 6. This system is familiar to you because it is the scheme used in scientific notation to represent very large or very small numbers in your calculator. What do we do next? We first of all realize that the negative sign in front of the 114 is going to be recorded as either a 1 or a 0 depending on whether it is positive or negative as shown. This is called sign magnitude notation and it means that the sign is indicated by the use of a bit and the rest of the bits are used to indicate the magnitude of the number being stored. So the very first binary digit in our converted number is going to be either a zero if the main number is positive or a one if the number is negative. The next thing we do is operate 
on the exponent of 2. There on the right-hand side, you see that we have ta taken the 2 to the power of 6. We have added the 6 to 127, which gives us 133. And we have converted 133 to its binary representation on 8 bits. Why have we chosen to add 127? This scheme allows us to represent negative numbers in the exponent because we could just as easily have 2 to the minus 6 power, in which case the number would be a very small number instead of a very large number. In the excess 127 scheme, which is what this is called, we always add 127 to whatever the exponent is. That is why it's called excess 127. So what is the next step? The next step now is to write down the binary value that we just got right after the one that indicates the sign and then write down the value of the fractional exponent. The fractional exponent is the binary number to the right of the binary point as shown in green. Once you follow these steps, you will go fine. What is the next step? The next step is to add zeros to the right of this to arrive at our 32 bits. Now you might say, why should we add so many zeros to reach 32 bits? Remember I told you before, the total representation is on 32 bits. 23 bits of which are allocated to our fractional exponent. So this allows us to represent some pretty complex numbers, when I say complex numbers, I mean numbers that have lots of decimal places. But to make it easy on students, I only use the first 9 or 10, and then I allow you to write zeros for the remainder. But if you were trying to get a very accurate value, the most accurate you could in binary, you could in fact use up all of those 23 bits in the computer to arrive at a very accurate representation of a fairly precise real number. It only remains now for us to take these 32 bits that we have derived and write them simply in the hexadecimal notation. And we divide them into groups of four in order to do that. And for each group of four, we write the hex character that relates to that particular pattern in the binary. To find out the hex digit relationship between the binary 4 and the hex digit, you can go back and watch my video on number systems. We are going to now take a number that's represented as 8 hexadecimal digits on the top and we are now going to convert it back to whatever binary number is being stored in the computer with these 32 bits or 4 bytes. We've divided our bytes in groups of 2 hexadecimal digits because as you were aware hex it takes 2 hexadecimal digits to make 1 byte. Since each hexadecimal digit is 4 bits and a byte is 8 bits. We have also converted our hexadecimal numbers back into binary. The 4 bits that represent each particular hexadecimal digit are clearly indicated in the screen. The next thing we're going to do is to pick off the first bit. And that gives us our sign. So we instantly know that this number is positive. Go back and remember that I said if the first bit is a 1, it's a negative number. And if the first bit is a 0, it's a positive number. 
Next, we pick off the first eight bits after the sign bit. First eight bits after the sign bit, and we convert that to its binary equivalent. That particular byte works out to 135 in decimal. The next thing we do is subtract 127 from it. This should come as no surprise because this number is stored in XS127 format. And if we added 127 to it when we were converting the original real number into its hexadecimal representation, we have to subtract 175 sorry, 127 in the reverse operation. What do we do next? We write 1 with a binary point after it. You always do this because the 1 that is to the left of the binary point is not stored in the computer. So if you did not store it when you were going in the forward direction, you don't expect to get it back out of your stored four bytes. So you write it down and then you tackle the remainder of the bytes in your representation. Now I've put some dashes there because it's not necessary that we use all of those zeros. We only need to use as far as we need to move the point. Now, as you can see, we have to move the point eight places to the right. We moved it to the left in the other operation, so now we have to move it to the right. So we move the point eight places to the right as indicated, and then we have to convert what remains back into its decimal equivalent. To the left of the binary point, we have the numbers 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, and 256. Those are the values of those bit positions. So uh, we have added up in green the bit position wherever there is a 1. The 16 is not included in that list because on the 16 position there is a 0. And when we add up the value of all of those 1s, we come up to 495. It only now remains to deal with the 1 on the right of the binary point, And we know that is 0.5. So the number being represented by 43 F7 C000 is actually positive 495.5. Thank you for watching the Stephen Mendes channel and we'll see you in the next video.